So, if you have watched some of my videos previously, you will know I am a big fan of Ampla electric bikes. And I have, at the moment, the Kurt, and you can see the videos that we did on that. But if you're also like me, you go to the Ampla website, which is a wonderful website, and you look and you see something called the Stout. And I kind of look at that and go, I wonder what that bike is actually like. So the good news is, we have the Stout bike. That's right, no expense has been spared in the making of this video for you, my dear viewer, to see what the Stout bike is like. Apparently I'm not the right body shape to fit in a box. So the bike, like the Kirk, comes pretty much ready assembled. So I guess we'll just finish assembling it. Ampla. First time they've sent me a British plug. Awesome! We got there in the end. Pedals. The usual Ampla wooden box full of the tools which we need to build the bike. Love it, tells you uh, the name, frame size, colour, date of assembly. Everything's on there. Sweet. And again, the chocolate corn. And the charger. According to Ampler, it takes two and a half hours for a full recharge of the battery from scratch. Which is pretty quick. You know when a company uh, really cares about its branding? And they put little logos on the Velcro strap that holds your charger together. Nice little touch. Choose the 4mm hex key. I chose that. Take the front off, that's what I was doing. Put the handlebars on. Check the alignment. Skills. Apparently I didn't need to read the instructions. It's worth getting these tight. Because remember on the Kurt bike when we put that together and we were riding it along quite a rocky road, the handlebars came loose a little bit and so the paint on the handlebars got a little bit scratched. First impressions are it's a lovely looking bike. Very different to the Kurt in terms of what it's designed to be from the look and feel. This I would say is much more the leisure commuter's bike. As an aside, if you're thinking about buying the Amp bike, you get these locks as an option. I remember when I got my Hawk, I got this lock. These things are incredible. They just, they're really small and tiny, but they come out. So you unlock them and you can, and they just pack up super small, they're super strong. And I've always got mine in my backpack. I prefer them over the D ones because they're not sticking out as much and they're nice and compact, super secure. So while it's charging, I'll get the curtain and we'll compare the two bikes, the curtain and stout, so you can see the difference between the two. Hopefully then there'll be enough charge in this that we can take it out for a spin. Charged it up, got on the bike, had a little ride. What do I think? Well, it is very, very different to ride in the Kurt, but then they're two completely different bikes. And that's kind of the thing that I'm coming away with. This thing is definitely the cruiser. It's the, it's the Sunday afternoon of bikes. I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. I just want comfort. I just want to feel like, you know, I'm, I'm stronger on the roads. This thing, is the way to go. If leisure and comfort is what you're after, this thing will do it. It's super comfortable. It's got a nice riding position. You're nice and upright. The handlebars are in a good position. I like the grips on the bars. Really, really nice. I'm not so sure about the gears, um, but I think I'm used to riding a single speed gear bike. Obviously, if I change gear, it makes it easier to cycle. It is a heavier bike, so I can see that you're gonna need those if you've got one or two hills. And um, the cool thing about the electric bike is you could probably just leave it in its top gear and, and you're fine setting off. The motor kicks in and helps you. Um, but if things are getting a little sticky on the hills, you can knock it down a little peg or two on the gears there. I personally just find them a slight inconvenience because I'm so used to not having them, but I get the value of them. But yeah, it's super cool. I mean, I can see, you know, this is gonna be useful if I'm taking a load of bags to university or school or to, you know, I'm carrying my laptop to work or whatever. Again, I'm not in a hurry. I'm just, it, don't get me wrong, this thing flies along 
but I'm, I, don't, I don't feel one way or the other about it. It's just an easy cycle, right? It's just a leisurely, easy cycle. So this bike has come fully loaded. Um, we've got the nine gears on the back, which I think are standard. Uh, it came with the optional lock, which I think is brilliant. Definitely get one of those. They're amazing, those things. It's got the lights, which are built into the frame. You can control those uh, either with the app or just with this button. I've turned the bike on. Uh, the lights up, not that you can tell, but the lights are on. Um, but if I press and hold it, the lights go off. You can also do it on the app. You don't need it. You can do it on the bike. Um, it's got the kickstand, which is nice when you're down by the river and you want to do some video. Really, really helpful. I really like the wide tires. Um, that's, I think, what really helps you feel sort of comfortable on this bike. Nice wide tires. One of the things I noticed about cycling this versus cycling the Kurt is, on the Kurt, it is fast, it is agile, but you feel everything in the road, right? Every little bump. Whereas this thing will take up one or two bumps. The nice wide tires just makes it feel a little bit more stable. If you live in a city like Liverpool, it's very important because the roads, they're not the best, let's just put it that way. So the electric motor is here in the back behind the gears uh, in the same location. The rear of the bike, the same as the Kurt. The battery and everything is in the frame. And if I lift the bike up just a little bit, this is where you access the battery uh, for servicing if you ever need to. Not that I ever have needed to service that or get into that, but that's where it sort of all accesses because it's all hidden in here in this frame, which is a beautiful thing. So it doesn't look like an electric bike, which for me is part of the massive appeal of Ampler. There's no massive batteries sitting anywhere. It just looks like a nice cruiser. Okay, so let's do a little bit of comparison between this, the Kurt, and this, the Stout. Now, like I said um, earlier, they are two completely different bikes. They're both Ampler bikes, they're both electric bikes. They both run off the same electric technology, but they are very different. Like I said, this is the cruiser. This is the comfortable one. This is the fast, agile one. This is perfect for me because I want to get from my house to the office as quickly as I can because, you know, that's just my default, right? This is if I want to go downtown with some friends and we just want to go for a four-hour bike ride, have ice creams and coffees along the way, the leisure type bike. For me, this is the, the scream along the road. So what are some of the differences? Well, First and foremost, they look very different. This bike uh, weighs about two kilos less than this one. And there's a number of reasons for that. One is the wheels, you can see the wheels. Uh, these wheels are obviously much thinner and lighter than the ones on the Stout. Um, we do have the deeper rim set on the Kurt than we do on the Stout. I really like these wheels. They look good, but they're a pain in the backside when you have to change the inner tube, just saying. Uh, the next big difference is the forks. On the uh, Kurt bike here, these are carbon fiber, and on here they're aluminium, so they're a lot lighter uh, on the Kurt. Frame is quite similar. They look quite similar frames. It says on the website that this frame is double butted, which basically means the frame is thicker near the edges of it than it is in the middle. In the middle, it tends to be a little bit thinner without losing strength to keep the weight down, just to you know, give it that strength but without the weight. So here you can see a big difference is in the chain set. Uh, this one has gears, this is single speed. You can order the Kurt with the gears, which is probably helpful if you live in a super hilly place. I mean, Liverpool's got its hills, but you know, they're not mountainous by any stretch of the imagination. And this is great for me. I re I'm a big fan of the single speed, like I said, because it's a lot less maintenance, you don't have to think about it, you just, you know, off you go and zoom. Another big advantage is you get the carbon option on the Kurt, which I think is just fantastic. Uh, the carbon drives are great, a lot quieter than the bike chains and a lot less maintenance. Whereas on here, you've obviously got the chain and the gears. Uh, that's the sort of standard. I don't think you can get this option on that bike. It just default comes with those. But that's another big difference is in the crank set. So both bikes can come with the mud guards. You've obviously got the uh, the bag mount on the back here. You can actually get it to fit on the back here as well if you wanted to. When I ordered my original Hawk, the first version of this bike, I actually did get this bag rack on the back, never used it. Um, so eventually took it off. And I didn't like it because if you had a bag on one side, the bag just felt out of balance. Um, certainly on a bike like this, which is faster and agile, more agile. Whereas on here, I think it'll be fine. The bike's slightly heavier. It feels a bit wider on the road. And so this is ideal for this sort of shaped bike, I think. It didn't work so well for me on this one. So they've both got the same light system, front lights here and uh, lights 
in the uh, seat mount, which is cool. I uh, really like that, really nice feature. Another really obvious difference you can tell is gonna be the color of the bike. So this is a graphite gray and it's quite shiny, quite a gloss paint. Um, it's quite nice actually, quite a nice gray color. Uh, this bike is the matte black. I love the matte black. The matte black for me is just, well, it's just it's just me really. Um, so I much prefer this color to this, but I get why this color doesn't really work on this style bike. I think for this style of bike, they've chosen a really great color here. There is another frame option. You can have it so the bar comes up here rather than across. You know, great if you're wearing skirts a lot. Um, and I think that also comes in red. One of the key differences between the two bikes, obviously, is the seating position on the bike and the way that it sort of makes you, this one sort of brings you down, this one sits you up. And the way the handlebars are all designed around the riding position and comfort, whereas this is much your lower down, more agile. So you've got, got the winged handlebars on this bike, whereas you've just got the straight handlebars on the Kurt. Brakes are also very different, I've noticed between the two. They seem to me, I don't know if it's the way they're set up, but they are much stronger on the Kurt than they are on this bike. I think the idea is you're normally gonna go quicker on this bike, so you need to have stronger brakes to stop sooner. They didn't feel as powerful, actually, on this bike um, as they do on that one when I was riding it. I don't suppose this, I mean, I stopped. It's not too much of an issue at all. Um, but the bike, the brake set is uh, different. And then finally, one of the key difference, another key difference, is gonna be the seats. This is more your racing style kind of seat. This is your, not so racing style, it's more geared around comfort actually. And so this is much more comfortable as a seat than this one. And um, this one kind of is great for the, the incline, makes you sit down. This one, you're kind of happy to sit up and put your weight on the seat and just kind of cruise along. Turn on. This is where you're grateful for both the gears and the electric assist on the hills. Although it's not really a hill, it's more like a minor bump. So here we are, arrived right? nice, safe, and sound at our intermediate destination for this morning's production meeting Starbucks. Gentlemen, good morning. So I'm riding the new Amper bike uh, back home tonight. I'm not the Kurt, I'm riding the Stout. I decided to try it. I was gonna cycle it home and see what happens. You know, just compare, contrast. And I'm glad I did, and I'll show you why. Check it out. That bike rack is useful for the cocktail set, which I've just bought from the store. I went and stopped at the shop on the way home from work. Didn't even think about how I was going to carry back whatever it was I was buying, just went and bought it. And then I came out and thought, how in the world am I going to transport this? Aha, uh -huh, we have a rack. And it turns out the stout is ideal for transporting your cocktail sets. Who knew? So the downside to letting the kids try the Ampler Stout bike is I have to ride their bikes whilst they're riding mine. And their seats are a little bit lower. It makes it a little bit more tricky. So we're on a family bike ride, testing this new Ampler Stout bike, cycling through the very beautiful parks with the beautiful wife and kids. Let's see what we think. What do you think? Yeah, it's really nice. Good little cruiser. Good little cruiser. Yeah, I agree with what you said about the other one. Like the other one's definitely more for speed, but this is more for comfort and enjoying yourself, I think. Good night.
one as fast as the other one. Come on, try and get on. <laughs> Are you stuck? <laughs> so from this simple test, we have deduced that the amplest out bike is not for 11 year old girls. <laughs> I guess the question should be, do I feel guilty that I'm riding an electric bike and they're all riding normal bikes? Let me think about that. Um, no, no, not one little bit actually.